the expanded mod family needs to be stopped. Or does it? Let's take a look. Hi everyone, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be checking out the expanded mod family mod pack for EU4. If you enjoy this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 20% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So these are some mods that I have wanted to cover for a very long time. I just didn't know how to approach making this video since uh, there's so many mods in this mod pack or mod family, whatever you like to call it. And it features some of the most popular mods for EU4 of all time. You can check that out on Steam and the number of subscribers. Paradox just recently revealed in a dev diary that some of these mods are actually one of the most popular mods as well from their own sources too. So you probably heard of them. You may even play with them. And today we're going to be checking out just a few of them since there's so many. So as you can see right here, this is the pop-up you get when you launch the game and these are the mods which are featured in the expanded mod family. The green ones are the ones I'm going to be covering today, such as missions expanded, governments expanded, national ideas expanded, flavor and events expanded, and formables expanded. So let's jump into the game, check out governments expanded first and see if this mod really needs to be stopped. And once you jump in you can see some start dates which basically tell you some nice things things, some areas that have been modded and stuff like that. For example, form the formidable commonwealth with the brand new mission trees for Poland and Lithuania. The classic Eastern European power Muscovy Russia feature revamped and reworked mission trees. Kazan, Tatarstan, Zaporozhye and Albania. Lots of different stuff added for lots of different nations and you can see just some of the things that have been added if you click in these bookmarks. So let's jump in and check out Governments Expanded. So like the Steam description right here says for Governments Expanded, Governments Expanded elaborates on the government mechanic introduced in the Dharma update, offering more than 275 new historically accurate government reforms, as well as over 100 original events. The mod aims at living up to and surpassing Paradox standards. So there are a couple of tiers here outlined by the mod creators, such as S tier nations for this mod. For example, France, which we are playing as right now. If we go into the government reform, we can see that we have the French French feudalism government type. This is a unique one for them, but it's not only that. We also have the Ancien Regime, the, I'm not gonna pronounce, Du Soleil, Arch Monarchy, which I don't think is unique for them, Electoral Monarchy, so we have these three right here. Obviously, right away, a lot more choice than regular U4. Now we move on to tier 2, where you can see the standard two government reforms and we also have some other ones like Papal Embassy, City Privileges, Urban Goods Produced plus 15%, count me in, Blood Tax, Ooh, Military Advisor Cost minus 10%, I think I'm gonna be taking that. There are even more tiers going up in Bureaucracy, three new ones as we can see right here, depending on what you wanna focus on of course. There are of course more Religion focused ones, Conquest focused ones, Playing Tall focused ones, Tier 4 is Military focused, and we can see, well, a bunch of unique ones unlike anything we have in U4, whereas this is tier 4 and U4, right? Feudal levies, National Guard, Mercenary Corps, basically how you want your army to look like. Do you want it focused on mercenaries? Like it's sort of supposed to be in the early game. Do you want to focus on conscription and massive armies? Like it's supposed to be in the late game. In tier 4, we have more administration related stuff, which will help you manage your economy and stuff like that. Tier 6, you know some of them and you don't know this one. Subservient bourgeoisie. Production efficiency and war taxes cost. I like that one. Tier 7 is more economic focused ones, 5 unique ones for the French continental system, you already know this from history probably, and it strengthened the industrial sector, it relates to a lot of other mods, so that's why some of these stuff might be unfamiliar to you. Tariff and trading rights, taxation, we also have more stuff focused on absolutism in tier 8, basically how centralized or decentralized you want your state to be, and the final ones are of course separation of power, so France is one of the S tier nations. Here we are as the Ottomans, another S tier nation, of course we do have the Ottoman government type, which you all know very well, a very nice government type from Vanilla U4. And then we have some other nice ones for the Ottomans, city privileges, demi nobles. This is sort of focused on your estates, the tier 2 like I said previously, the Temariot domains focusing on the Temariot system that the Ottomans had, Qadi authority, this is once again a religious one, some more ones related to bureaucracy such as focusing on religion, expansion, promoting cultures or not 
not promoting them. Tier 4 is once again military. You will see the ones I showcased in the French government reforms, but we also have the expanded Dervishime right here for the Ottomans. Manpower recovery speed, nice. We also have another unique one here, the This Dynasty, possible advisors plus one, and cost of advisors with ruler's culture, pretty nice. We also have Sultanate of Women, prestige and female advisor chance, pretty nice. More economic policy ones, more absolutism and decentralization and centralization focused reforms. This is a pretty good one right here. And the last one, we have this one, which gives you max absolutism plus 10 and admin free policies plus one. Unique for the Ottomans and rum. So this is a nice final unique government reform, something we don't have in vanilla EU4. Moving to Poland, another S tier nation, we have the feudal nobility. Of course, Poland does start with that in vanilla EU4 too, but we also have Polish constitutionalism. We can see right here what it gives us. I like that plus five admin efficiency for a tier one reform. That's pretty sweet. Another one focusing on the nobles, we have magnate law, which is a kind of estate in Poland. National manpower plus 10, pretty nice. More magnate governors right here. So theocratic bureaucrats reinforce Magdeburg rights, trade efficiency, depending on how you want to play. We have Zlata recruits right here. Army tradition decay, another unique one for Poland. Reform the same, which is of course a sort of unique unique government for Poland. You all know the same by now from Vanilla EU42. Of course, it is nice that some of them, even though they're the same, they're different. You know, same, same, but different, but still the same. And we can see some very nice government reforms for Poland here. Another S tier nation would be Spain, which I'm not gonna get into right now. But then we have A tier nations such as the Netherlands, Austria, Byzantium, Persia, Hejaz, Portugal, England, and so on. I'm gonna jump into Byzantium right now and see their government reforms. Here we are as Byzantium, and we can see that we have the Roman autocracy government reform. We have to be Byzantium or the Roman Empire for this one. So probably one of the most unique ones in the game. Plus five admin efficiency in 1444 plus 100 government cap. Sign me up. We also have Justinian code for yearly legitimacy right here. Restore the Comnenoid army. Army tradition decay. Roman court. Stab cost minus 10. So definitely some nice ones for Byzantium too. Especially this first one. I like it a lot. Here we are as Austria and you can see that we have well nine possible tier one government reforms. Of course you can swap in and out of some of them and you can get some of them later but we have austrian archduchy right here archduchy a regular one habsburg monarchy that's a pretty pretty sweet one right there austrian empire so yeah one of my favorite nations in the game actually it is my favorite nation in the game austria right there if you guys didn't know now you know going on to the papal state another a tier nation where the papacy tolerance prestige from development dynastic theocracies we have it right here there's three additional tiers in theocracies by the way according to the steam description so we can see that we have 12 total tiers and you're definitely gonna have lots of fun going through these as the papal state and there's a ton of other good a tier nations like i said earlier hungary korea serbia luxembourg morocco tunis navgorod genoa lots of them even lots of b tier countries of course all of these have unique government reforms it just depends how many they have you know lithuania all of the italian cultured nations have unique ones all the german culture nations have unique ones hre members have other unique ones japanese cultured nations have unique their own unique ones same with the russians so that's focusing mostly on if you're a certain culture you will have certain reforms that another culture won't sweden denmark songhai mali and more and very briefly that's governments expanded a very big mod a very popular mod you have to check it out for yourself and this video won't really do it justice because i have to cover several more mods so definitely check it out for yourself now we move on to missions expanded which features over 300 mission trees each with in-depth historical and immersive missions which you can explore let's take a look at brandenburg right here and their brandenburg into prussia mission tree now don't make the same mistake i did when you click on the nation their missions won't be here you need to let a couple of days go by like this and you will get this event where you can select the missions from missions expanded or regular missions from the game let's select these and check them out and this is what they look like for brandenburg right here we have missions that give you claims on some areas right here you get some events and more nice morale from this one more claims over here ccr minus 10 for four years that's pretty nice here this focuses on getting some electors to vote for you and stuff like that where you get even more claims here we can see political dynasty gives you plus one diplo rep 
while you have 80 legitimacy or you have a diplo rep advisor this branch over here focuses on building up your nation deving building buildings and lots of other cool missions like that now that was a relatively small one even for this mod so taking a look at poland's mission tree right here we can see that it's basically massive this is the poland slash commonwealth mission tree and uh i don't think this compares to vanilla eu4 so no wonder missions expanded is one of the most popular mods of all time once you get a ruler you get this event right here you can unlock this mission which gives you a bunch of claims all around you once you get some advisors you get some wonderful discounts for the advisors dealing with the states right here dealing with prussia expanding in the west getting pus over bohemia and hungary just like we have in regular eu4 but these are done in a different way of course we can even get silesia from bohemia once we conquer prussia get some more claims up here develop your cities build buildings we can see growth of national industry right here all the overflowing prestige will be converted into random monarch power that's pretty sweet down here in this branch we focus on expanding in the balkans for example like conquering wallachia and bulgaria conquering muscovy and going in that direction over here getting ukraine dealing with the time of troubles and getting victory over muscovy or russia expanding in scandinavia as well more branches down here which focus on estates and development advisors army tradition getting centers of trade some prosperity focus missions down here there's a ton of fun to be had with this massive massive mission tree here we are as england they already have a pretty good mission tree in vanilla u4 but uh let's scroll down just a little bit so you guys can see the number of different missions and branches that england has in this mission tree so let's start with this bottom one right here which basically focuses on developing your nations building buildings achieving prosperity we can see workshops naval infrastructure manufactories you get some really really nice bonuses from these embracing the renaissance then building universities and stuff like that deving your provinces a little two mission branch for the navy right here this entire branch right here focuses on colonization and trade once again we can see seize gibraltar caribbean intervene in the caribbean british west indies 13 colonies canada onto the cape of course this is in africa chart india indian trade companies this is for australia down here all of these focus on mostly colonization and of course the top one focuses on dealing with france dealing with the war of the roses expansion we can see we get claims in france expanding in the british isles puing france and conquering lots of different nations in ireland in scotland and in continental europe another small branch right here for when the reformation starts becoming anglican protestant or reformed here we are as the ottomans a nation which severely lacks a powerful mission tree because well in vanilla you for it was one of the first nations to actually receive a mission tree so it's not very big you get some claims down here and basically it focuses on conquering the balkans and the mamluks but in this mod oh boy look at this mission tree right here this bottom branch right here once again focuses on developing your nation building buildings dealing with the janissaries of course the unique unit type that the ottomans have and this top branch right here focuses on conquest conquest and only conquest we can start going down the balkan branch down here and right here and then continuing to subjugate and conquer anatolia then moving on to crimea aq qq cyprus all the islands right here in the aegean sea conquering iraq getting claims even in persia conquering this area right here further down in arabia getting claims in egypt conquering even more this way in the maghreb as we can see sultans of morocco conquest of tunis dominate the maghreb getting hungary right here in these lower branches of the balkan side of the mission tree sees hungary upper hungary croatian border vassalized transylvania custodian of the holy cities for these areas right here here we are as france once again a massive massive mission tree we can check it out right here so many things to do so many places to conquer focusing on lots of different stuff expanding navally expanding your lands in continental europe in france especially dealing with burgundy going down to italy going down to iberia ending the french wars of religion disaster or religious turmoil building up your nation in prosperity with buildings and development colonizing as well lots more colonization focused things than vanilla eu4 we can see the caribbean canada louisiana mexico africa even going down to southeast asia and india and we have a whole nother branch for dealing with the french revolution in the late game which is definitely gonna spice up the late game as france and that focuses on dealing with the revolution and conquering things that well france has conquered historically in that region with 
Charlotte Napoleon. Now let's quickly move on to flavor and events expanded because well I can't really do justice showcasing the missions you do have to play the game yourself and see what it's all about. Much more dynamic and way cooler than vanilla EU4 and you will definitely have lots of fun playing any of the nations that have unique mission trees in missions expanded. There are a couple of screenshots on the steam page you can see right here and all of these highlighted nations are the ones that have unique mission trees made specifically for them. This first one right here is for nations in 1444 and these other two ones are for formable nations. So as you can see a ton of content right there. So let's move on to flavor and events. Now flavor and events expanded is a mod that aims to expand and give flavor to your game by well adding new events pretty much like the name of the mod says. Now there isn't a real way to showcase this mod without me actually playing a campaign and going through all those events but there is a ton of them and it will definitely make your game a lot more fun. It also does feature some other stuff like educating your heir I've been told, generic events that well a lot of nations can get. It also updates insults so let's see if we can get a little insult going here against France although I do think that one is. <laughs> so we can send this to Naples. There we go. That's one that it adds. Let's uh, try one for Poland right here. Oh okay that's the same one. Ah I think this is a new one. Your blood will make the soil I take from you all the richer. And aside from that there's hundreds and hundreds of national events. Now this image right here you can see on your screen right now is basically all the nations that have had flavor and events added to them. As we can see in the legend right there all of these nations that have red have one to four unique events added to them. And that's only unique events right? There's a ton of more generic events that you can get as those nations as well. The yellow nations have had five to ten events added unique for them by the way once again saying and the blue nations have 10 plus unique events and event chains associated with them so it's definitely going to give you a lot more flavor especially if you like tough events such as the ones that have been added in leviathan in southeast asia there are some like that in this as well but for other nations that's pretty much all i can say for flavor and events expanded dude just turn it on and play the game Trust me, you will have a lot more fun and you will have way less downtime with all of those events and stuff that's been added specifically for flavor and events expanded. Now let's take a look at formables expanded, which of course aims to expand the formable nations that are present in EU4. Some of these are historic nations that have existed before EU4, some of them are nations that will exist after EU4 and some of them are sort of fictional nations or ideas that never really came to fruition. Here we are as Milan and Milan can actually form a couple of other nations aside from of course forming Italy. First right here we can see that we can form the League of Lombardy. These are the provinces right here that we need to own and our nation will change to the Lombard League. And there's another formable nation right here which is Lombardy Venice. Another excellent formable nation that well not only Milan can form but Venice too. Here I am as the Lombard League right now. We can see their flag right here pretty nice. We can also see that they have unique national ideas which is pretty sweet. Of course some of these national ideas are part of the national ideas expanded which I will cover after this. Here I am as Lombardy Venice a nice flag right there basically a merger of the Lombardian and Venetian flag we can see that they don't have any unique national ideas. Here I am as England and not only can we form Great Britain but we can also unite the crowns of England and France for formables expanded only and become the Angevin realm which is excellent and I do think it is something that should be excellent actually included in vanilla EU4, even if it is quite a while before the game starts. Here I am as the Angevin realm and we can see that they do have unique national ideas and they have a pretty sweet flag too. They do have the English missions. Here we are as Morocco and we can see that we can of course become the Mamluks and form Andalusia as them, but we can also unite the people of the Maghreb. This is one of the nations that hasn't existed like I said, but it is something that can happen in EU4. The country changes to Maghreb. As Austria we can even form the nation of Austria Bavaria which is pretty sweet. We can see that as Denmark not only can we form Scandinavia but we can also restore the North Sea Empire another nation which I do think should be featured in vanilla EU4. Here we are as the North Sea Empire we have a Norse flag right there and they do have unique national ideas very strong ones which focus on military stuff primarily. Infantry combat plus 15, CCR minus 20, national manpower 25, morale of navies 2, morale of armies really really good 
good national idea set for the North Sea Empire, definitely a nation you will want to be forming instead of uh, Scandinavia. The Japanese nations can also form many other nations aside from Japan or as precursors to Japan. Right here as Ashikaga, we can see that we can unite Japan, of course, form Nancho right here, legitimacy of the Southern Court, the Northern Court right here, form Hokucho, legacy of the Emperor Go Daigo, and form Kenmu, strength of the Minamoto clan, and form Minamoto. Very nice flavor and lots of different ways you can take any of the Japanese daimyos. Here I am as Flanders, and not only can we form the Netherlands, that's right, we can also form Belgium. Belgium and you for anyone? Now here I am as an Irish miner over here, of course we can form Ireland, but another thing we can form is a nation of the Celts, basically. Once we conquer all the historic lands that have been inhabited by Celts, such as Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and Cornwall right here, as well as Brittany, we will be able to form that nation. Tier not Celtic, of course we have the Celtic knot as the flag, and we do have unique national ideas, a very, very powerful one, focus on massive conquests and massive armies and navies, which are also extremely powerful, morale of armies, naval tradition, colonial range, unrest, settler increase, gov cap, manpower, discipline, and stuff like that. I would love it if this was in vanilla EU4, but you don't have to just want it to be in vanilla U4, you can play it right here, right now, with formables expanded. And of course, all the other mods that I have showcased in today's video. You can also form the Latin Empire, various Chinese formable nations, and a ton of other nations. Let's move on to National Ideas Expanded now. Now, National Ideas Expanded aims to give unique national idea sets to nations that have sort of filler national ideas. Not to say not unique ones, they have unique ones in vanilla, but they're sort of not very fitting to what the nation is sort of supposed to have, and they probably don't offer enough flavor in playing as that nation. And there's a massive amount of nations that have received revamped national idea sets in this mod, from small and seemingly insignificant ones to major nations. The first nation that is listed that has a unique national idea set is of course the Livonian Order on the Steam page. We can check out the Livonian Order ideas here, missionary strength, morale, definitely focused on what a crusader state should have, religious and military focused national ideas as we can see right here. Here we are as Oirat, we have Oirat national ideas, of course they would be focused on horde stuff, calf cost and calf combat ability and their traditions, sign me up, gov cap plus 10, of course you need that as a horde, land maintenance, CCR, lots of heavily heavily conquest focused stuff. Ever wanted to play as Cone but don't think they are unique enough? Well now you do. Another theocratic state with theocracy focused national ideas, missionaries, A impact minus 10, we do need that for the HRV, Diplo rep, provincial trade power that focuses on inland trade of course, improve relations, devotion, institution spread, stuff like that, very awesome stuff. Ever wanted to play as Ramazan? Well now you can, Ramazani national ideas, discipline and CCR minus 20%, I know who I'm forming rum with, production efficiency, morale, dev cost, very nice, all nice national ideas. Like I said this mod does focus on smaller and more neglected nations and giving them unique national ideas. This mod also gives unique national idea sets to all the French minor nations ever wanted to play as Armagnac? Now you can because they have unique national ideas. You know all the Chinese miners that pop out of Ming? That's right, all of them have unique national ideas as well. Lots of natives in North America have unique national idea sets, lots of these nations over here in Mexico have unique national idea sets, not just the important ones like Aztec for example. A bunch of nations in India, even the smaller ones, let's take a look at right here this nation, Kalahandi, yep, they have unique national ideas. Ever wanted to play in West Africa? Let's check out Zazo right here. Do they have unique national ideas? Of course they do. This mod adds national ideas, unique ones, specifically tailored for that nation, for almost any minor nation you can think of. Let's see right here, does this nation, Enora, have unique national ideas? Of course they do, you're playing with national ideas expanded, what did you think? Oh by the way, every Italian miner has unique national ideas. Oh by the way, pretty much every HRE miner has national ideas. You wanna play as Bamberg? There we go, Bamberger ideas. All the Russian miners have also received revamped national ideas as well, with the exception of Muscovy of course, are pretty good. Below zero right here, for sure. Odoyev, yep. The French ideas have also been changed up a bit, getting calf combat plus 20 as a starting tradition and French staying power as plus 15% morale of armies for the finisher. And some other nations 
national ideas have been retouched as well, like Castile for example. So that's governments expanded, missions expanded, flavor and events expanded, formal was expanded, and national ideas expanded. Just five of the many mods that are featured in the expanded mod family. Of course, I couldn't showcase them to the max because these are types of mods you have to play to truly experience them, but I do hope that I have piqued your interest and I do hope you will check out these mods. They are awesome, awesome mods, and it's no wonder they're one of the most popular ones of all time for EU4. So many people play with these mods, and you will not have a single boring game with any nation in EU4 just with two or three mods from the expanded mod family activated. Of course, a huge shout out to all the people that have worked on these mods. There are many developers, huge shout out to all of them for the work that they have put in, and this obviously has taken a lot of time and a lot of effort to provide such unique things for EU4. If you guys want, I can cover the other mods in the expanded mod family, so leave a like for that to let me know that you're interested in seeing the rest of these mods and what they do as well. And let me know in the comments below what are some other mods that I should showcase. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 20% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. And join the Discord, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.